but um, pass the and then try and build a big lead. And hopefully, if we get a big lead, then we can try and knock them over. Day four starts at 10 o'clock tonight. Roger Federer begins his French Open campaign tonight as the 33-year-old looks to break his six-year drought at the Clay Court Grand Slam. Federer is the second seed and has avoided an early meeting with the likes of Rafa Nadal, Novak Djokovic, who are on the other side of the draw. My focus is not Rafa or Novak or anybody else right now. It's my own game and uh, the players I will face in, in my section of the draw. Federer meets Colombian Alejandro Fella in the first round. I'm Jenny Marcroft. It's three past seven. Radio Live Weather with Mammoth Modern Insulation. Be warm and lower your energy bills. 0800 Mammoth. There's a heavy snow warning in force for Fiordland, Canterbury Plains, Christchurch, North Otago, Dunedin, Clutha, Central Otago and Southland. And a strong wind warning for the Canterbury Plains, Christchurch, North Otago, Dunedin, Clutha and Central Otago. To the main forecast now, Northland to Taranaki, including Coromandel Peninsula. Showers some will be heavy with hail. The Bay of Plenty fine with the odd shower. Gisborne and Hawke's Bay fine today, but showers tomorrow morning with snow to 400 metres in Hawke's Bay and 700 metres in Gisborne. Taupo and Whanganui to Wellington, also for Wadadapa and Marlborough. Isolated showers becoming widespread tonight. Snow down to 300 metres overnight, clearing tomorrow morning. Showers return again north of Manawatu tomorrow afternoon. Nelson fine. Canterbury, brief showers today with snow to 400 metres. Mainly fine tomorrow, but heavy showers about Banks Peninsula and snow to 200 metres and severe southwesterly gales. Fuller and Westland, a few showers north of Greymouth, fine further south. Otago, Southland and Fiordland, showery with hail and possible thunderstorms and severe southwesterly gales. Snow down to sea level this evening with significant accumulations above 200 metres. I'm Jenny Marcroft. It's six past seven on Radio Live. It's Sunday Social, an hour dedicated to social media with Vaughan Davis. <laughs> Welcome to Sunday Social on the 24th of May, the show that the New Zealand Radio Awards forgot because we forgot to enter. But I know you were there. I know you were out there listening, snuggled up warm in front of the one bar heater waiting for the cup of soup to warm up. Welcome, welcome. If you would like to tweet me, I am there at Vaughan Davis. I'd love you to be part of the show. Text 3920 keyword live. And YouTubers, we cater for you as well. YouTube.com slash Vaughan Davis TV. And you can not only hear the show you can see it too i've got my best hoodie on <laughs> but first and to sing the national anthem of new zealand lizzie marbley <laughs> Well, that's Lizzie Marvely, as most of us know her, standing in the middle of some godforsaken paddock, belting out the national anthem before a test match while the rest of us sneak in a quick toilet break before the haka. Or, if we're at the game, mumble our way through and hope no one notices we don't know the Maori words. <laughs> I, I don't watch a hell of a lot of rugby, so when I see Lizzie, it's online, tweeting away at Lizzie Marvely, which is why I've got on the show. Welcome to Sunday Social. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. 
It's a cold night, isn't it? It's here in Auckland? chilly. Yeah, it's a bit stormy out there. It's low double digits, which for us is it's very cold. <laughs> it's us, it, it is very cold. Hey, well, this 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 show is all about the social media, and Twitter is, as I said, where I know you from. Mm-hmm. Is that where you spend most of your time, sort of online and social media? Is, I, that, is that your your digital homeland, if you like? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I'm I really love Twitter. Uh, I do end up spending quite a bit of time on other social networks as well um, around the web. Um, but yeah, Twitter has kind of become, you know, like my, my news source and where I kind of catch up with what people are doing. And yeah, I'm, I'm a big Twitter fan. The, the, the idea of catching up with people is, is interesting because as someone, I, I'm guessing who sort of largely works sporadically, right? You'll go into a gig and other, other than that, you would sort of be sitting alone. You don't have a workplace. You don't turn up to the office and no, say, No, I'm a oh, freelancer. Morning, so. morning, morning, morning. <laughs> no, you, know, you don't, you don't clock, clock in at right? No. <laughs> so this kind of takes its place. Yeah, in a way. I mean, I'm quite often, you know, busy doing a million things during the day. But when I'm out and about, you know, that's the great thing about Twitter is it comes with you. So you can be sitting in the car waiting for a meeting, checking in on what's happening in around the, the world. In the, in the passenger seat. <laughs> Oh yeah, not while driving. You're not, you're not allowed to. <laughs> Although I did, I did see today going to the, one of those AA. You know those AA sort of rescue trucks going down the motorway. He had a he, he didn't have a phone. He had a whole entire laptop. The, well, on, that's on a stand. kind of ironic, really, isn't it? I know. <laughs> uh, the, the, the the laws probably don't don't cover that. It's probably not illegal, not technically. So, how much time a day in a day do you spend on this jolly thing? Do you think? This is the sort of thing people usually accuse me of. But. Yeah, well, I am a big kind of devotee. Um, I don't really, I wouldn't really count it. I kind of check in in between things. So uh, I wouldn't really probably spend, you know, like a solid hour on Twitter. Uh, but it might be something that I'll check in on, um, you know, just kind of when I've got a spare moment. And the gap, someone once described it to me early on as the, the, the mortar between the bricks of your day. Yeah, I actually I would kind of, kind of agree with that. <laughs> And, and uh, Twitter is one of the things you do, but w- w- what are the other places you sort of hang out online? You don't tell that secret ones, just the just. All right, the, so the none of ones. the private viewing ones. None then. of the private viewing <laughs> ones. Um, so I spend quite a bit of time uh, on Facebook, um, also YouTube, Instagram. Uh, those are kind of the main suspects, and then obviously I have um, kind of favourite websites that I'll you know check in with some news sites and a couple yeah, of blogs. Yeah, I want, I want to talk about websites a little bit later on, particularly as a, as a you know, musician, a singer, a composer. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking about Facebook before, though, and this idea that it's meant to be dying, right? For, oh, for, yeah, that's what everyone people. was saying. And you're a young people. I'm a young people, I am. You are. <laughs> Indeed. Um, yeah, I think it's it's a really, it was an interesting idea. It was it kind of got a lot of uh, media attention, you know, this, this big doomsday, Facebook is dying. But I really don't think that's the case. I think it's... Um, it's something that I will check in to to, to kind of that, have that more personal um, connection with friends, whereas Twitter maybe it's it's kind of not quite so personal, not quite so um, uh, like, you know, a two-way conversation in a way. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of young people are still on Facebook, but we probably use it in slightly different ways as well. I know Facebook groups are very popular. Uh, that kind of allows people to, to shut, you know, that kind of public uh, element of Facebook down, so it can be just the group of people that you want to be talking to. Yep. Um, so yeah, but I think more and more I'm saying Facebook is like the great referrer to the internet uh, as a whole. Yeah, because I mean, you know, the internet is big. Who has time to look for stuff? Exactly, and it's like it's curated for you. Which is which is good and bad. Yeah, I I kind of I haven't really completely made up my mind about uh, Facebook. Uh, I I do like spending time there, um, but I do actually prefer Twitter. As someone who is both an individual, you know, like a 25-year-old person, but also a brand, does the, <laughs> well, you, you, you are, right? Um, I don't know if there are T-shirts. Are there T-shirts? You get, <laughs> no, probably, there's probably, no T-shirts. There are probably fan-made <laughs> T-shirts. Um, how, do, how do you, does, does that constrain how you behave online? Do you go, oh, geez, I better not say this. This won't do, go down well. I'm, you know, I'm, I won't get another booking if I say, if I, you know, if I say what I really think about that person on TV. Well, I think it's an interesting one for all of us to think about, you know, not just people who are in the public eye. Um, because, I mean, once things are online, they're kind of there, they're out there. Uh, and, I mean, you see from, from viral 
posts that have that have just taken off from a complete, you know, some some person who's I don't know in in the the south of the US, for example, who's posted some horrible restaurant review and it's gone viral. So you know, I think that it's it's not just for people in the in the public eye. For me, um, yeah, I mean, I kind of have to just think about being a good person on social media as well, you know, because I think, and that's something well, that for, has to suck. <laughs> no, I think, I think people should really. And I think that's kind of, um, you know, we have a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of cyberbullying, and, and there is that element of, um, I'm behind a screen. Uh, I'm anonymous, so I can say whatever I like about people, and well, I that, just don't that, agree with that. That, that. That's an expression that you know comes out a lot. You know, you, you're anonymous. You're behind a screen. You could be anyone, but but actually, that's not true because people value their online identities quite a lot. The trust networks and the social networks they build up, and and kind of the last thing you want to be is anonymous. The actual you know commenting and bullying by anonymous people is kind of rare, isn't it? Well, you'd think so, but uh, not really. I mean, I suppose it depends where you hang out, but especially for younger people, I mean, you do see a lot of trolling. Um, and it, I, I mean, I feel like I was quite lucky because I sort of finished school. I think we had Facebook when I was about sixth or seventh form. Uh, we had Bebo and MySpace and those kinds of things, but not until I was kind of like a senior high school student. Um, so I wasn't really that affected by kind of cyber bullying, if you like. But from even from what I see, I have friends who are kind of like younger um, YouTube type musician, um, you know, stars who are just really amazing people. And and the bullying and the vitriol and, that and they, they just get. get talk, because you're right, you, you're sort of opening up. You know, I mean, just to be a musician in the first place, you, especially a songwriter, right? You're kind of opening yourself up. Yeah. But to do that online where people can come back at you. Yeah, is, absolutely. It's pretty hardcore. I, I was um, looking at a looking at an app the other day with that my 16-year-old son recommended, hot at school at the moment, hot. It's called, <laughs> it's called Yik Yak. Have you heard oh, of I have heard of this. Yeah. So this is this is deliberately anonymous. You you can't you can't really be yourself on Yik Yak, and it's just people saying stuff about other people in a in a certain geographical area. It feels like a I don't know. It feels like a formula for secondary Disaster? school bullying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at, at one level, it's it's kind of interesting. You know, imagine if you're on a you know a bus in a town you've never never been in. You turn on this thing, and, and suddenly you can you can you hear can the conversation people, yeah, without yeah. having a local social yeah. network, which I guess was the idea. But what it's actually being used for is, to, you know, let's pick on Lizzie. She looks funny, but you know, we, we'll name her, but no one knows who we are. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's interesting, you know, this kind of idea, all of this sharing and this connectivity. And I think it can be really incredibly positive. And I'm a big proponent, obviously, of social media. Uh, but, you know, it also has the potential to be really nasty. So I think it's just being aware of that and, and trying to encourage people to, you know, not be horrible online basically so let, let's dig into that a little bit i mean i i often compare social media to to, to real world places you know mm -hmm. we, we all have restaurants and bars and clubs well i don't know i don't go to restaurants <laughs> and bars and clubs but i read about people who do and some of them you walk into and you feel welcome and warm and everyone smiles and they're polite and others you feel unwelcome and you feel threatened especially as a woman there are places yes, yeah. in the real world where you don't feel safe mm -hmm. and there are places online where you don't feel safe. Yeah, that that's very true. I mean, there's uh, an interesting kind of movement online, the um, MRA, men's rights, um, you know, and it's, it's a kind of a very interesting um, segment um, of the online kind of population, but it can make it very threatening for people to, you know, people who are expressing themselves, especially women who are standing up and, and having opinions. I mean, there's the whole Gamergate um, issue. Uh, some, you know, this is the, uh, I think it's like feminist frequency, uh, Anita starts with an S, can't remember her last name, but she, you know, really was kind of hammered by this, this men's rights group. Um, for voicing an opinion about gaming and and it's it's really tough you know and it's i think a lot of people uh you know even though there are places that you can feel unsafe in the real world i don't think that you'd get quite the amount uh of hate and the 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 things that they say some of them are just awful i mean even me i had like a week ago or maybe two weeks ago someone told me to go and die so you know you, really? you well, yeah where, i mean and, and, and on what platform it was on twitter i think and, um, and what and, and who was this and what what had led to this some random person i have absolutely no idea and uh i think it was some opinion. I actually can't remember what it was. It was some opinion that I'd voiced about obviously something he didn't like. Clearly. Um, but I mean, do people go up to other people in the real world and say, you go and die? 
don't know. I think a smaller group of people would come up to you in the street and say that than would say that online. Yeah. yeah. So, so even even though that person is probably not that anonymous, they they do feel a little bit distanced. Yeah. There's no protected. consequence for them. That's and, um, right. They, yeah. they can't see your face. Yeah. Exactly. And they, and they it. also I think that quite often uh, you, there is a temptation to forget that people actually are human and and you know I mean people may think that that people don't actually see those tweets that come through because there's such a volume but you might just kind of get one and then you just, you know, it can have a real effect. It's, it's funny. Yeah. The, 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 the thing that social media does is connects humans to humans, you know, with, with even, even if the, the humans are within big companies or yeah. the humans are, are famous. And it's funny, you, you, you think the power balance is in favor of the big company, but actually sometimes it's in favor of the little person who, you know, sends a nasty tweet and the person working at the telco or the bank or the radio station has got to read it and suck I've it up. have got to deal with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, after the break, I want to talk about something uh, positive, new and really interesting. <laughs> it's for like four days old that you're doing. Um, Very new. That is attempting to maybe do something about all this. I'm Vaughan Davis with me, Lizzie Marbley. You're listening to Sunday Social. And after the break, we're all going to sing the national anthem to a cappella back soon. <laughs> Graham Hill's Weekend Variety Wireless. It's hard to find death on stage on the internet. I don't think that's part of the part of the conversation. It's fascinating to see though, because all these comedians talk about their death moments on stage, and I've never seen <laughs> one. The same kind of sensibility as Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, I think. Yeah. That kind of mixture of almost genuine horror with comedy and kids' entertainment. I mean, you couldn't get away with the child snatcher now. You'd frighten too many children. Yeah. I, I just love. I love like the slogans. I always like to look for guys' slogans. His slogan is defeat the Washington machine, unleash the American dream. Uh, it rhymes. <laughs> that must be it, true. What does it mean? <laughs> Graham Hill's Weekend Variety Wireless. Weekend nights from 8 till midnight and available via podcast 24-7 at radiolive.co.nz.
It's Sunday Social, an hour dedicated to social media with Vaughan Davis. And welcome back to Sunday Social with me in the studio tonight, Lizzie Marvel. You should have been here in the break. We did an entire acapella. We did rounds. You know, we do. You start the song, you do the song of the national anthem. I never knew you could sing so well. I, I sang beautifully. I'm you gonna, did. I, I'm going to um, sub in for you next time around, and you can do the radio show. BBs, I'll, I'll you just, can do the BBs. I'll just the, the BBs. What's the BBs? BBs, the backing vocals. Oh, the backing. Oh, the BBs. <laughs> We're all showbiz here at Radio Live now. We were talking before the break about the nasty side of the internet. Yes, it has one. Um, and mentioned that you've just four days ago done something um, to address at least part of that. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I've started this online media project uh, that's called villainess.com. Um, and it's basically aimed at young women. It's it's kind of its purpose is to empower uh, through smart, no filter media um and it's yeah like like you said it's only a couple of days old but it's been very exciting you know having some student journalists citizen journalists and then some inspirational columnists along as well and and you talk about no no filter media one of the things that it, it well certainly the content you've got up so far a lot of it is from a um unashamedly female perspective that's yes, that's, yeah. that's kind of the point yeah that's it kind of is <laughs> what, uh, when, I, when i first read it i saw villainess i thought it was vileness i thought oh that, that's <laughs> I thought, I thought that's a cool name for a website. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's an awesome name. I, I should register that. You I'll, should. I'll do that here on my laptop. Here you go. I'll, I'll, I'll take 10, 10% okay, commission. You, you just talk for a while. I'm just going to go get that. But what, tell me, why, why Villainess? Well, Villainess uh, is a bit of a play on uh, these you know, strong women throughout history who've kind of been created into villains um, for standing up, having opinions, people like uh, Joan of Arc. Uh, there's numerous saints who've been in that uh, position. Um, you know, even, I mean, we could argue Eve and Lilith and um, even recently uh, Malala, you know, the, the amazing young woman who was shot uh, by the Taliban yep. for basically saying, you know, girls deserve to be educated. So yeah, it's kind of this this take on um, these strong women and how they've been created into villains. And also it's kind of got that element of, um, you know, I'm, villainess kind of aims to be like badass do-gooding. So yeah, that's kind of the the motivation behind the name. Badass do-gooding, mm -hmm. that's kind of a take home, you should make that your positioning line. Because <laughs> do, yeah, do, do-gooding can be a little bit a bit nicey-nicey. A bit nicey-nicey. Yeah. I, I was having a bit of a read of the site and the, the story that kind of nailed the whole thing for me, I don't know if, this, if you consider this to be the typical story of the, the whole site, is one you wrote, uh, when did New Zealand become so sexist? Mm, yeah, one and, of the opening stories. Yeah, and, and, and in, in a positive way, you, you come off to me, having read that, as, as deeply pissed off but determined to do something. <laughs> You do, you do. You, yeah. you, you come off as, you know, and, and which is kind of at odds with your public image, I've got to say, which is which is interesting. <laughs> but, you know, and, and you see media, politics, advertising, I don't, I don't know if you got onto the music industry, but all, all of these things sort of equally equally carrying the blame. Is, is that is that the crusade you're on? In a way, um, that article talks about a number of uh, incidents that have happened uh, in this country in the first kind of five months of the year. And it, I just think I was kind of sitting there watching these things happen, bang, 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 and thinking, it's almost like we've gone back into the 1950s. Um, and yeah, I feel like it's a really incredible time. We have a lot of young women standing up and taking a stance and re-adopting uh, the term feminism. And I think feminism has had a really bad rap uh, probably in the last kind of twenty to thirty years. Well, it's, it's a controversial label. Now, this is going to mm. this is going to totally expose my lack of contemporary music knowledge. But who was <laughs> who was who the uh, who was the American Beyonce? singer? Beyonce. Yeah, who yeah. did the, the, did the dance for the... not very much with the. That, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, she's she's quite an amazing figure, Beyonce, Queen Bee. Um, an incredible following. You know, she's so massively influential. And then in her uh, the record that she dropped, kind of without any warning, uh, there's this uh, song, uh, "Flawless," and that that throughout the her show, she would uh, project feminist up onto the the kind of the screen behind her. And she also featured a speech from a famous feminist. I can't remember who that was off the top of my head. Uh, in the middle of a song, so. So that kind of brought it really into the public eye and that uh, combined with uh, Emma Watson and her campaign with the UN, he for she, um, you know, have really brought feminism uh, back into, you know, into, into what we're talking about. And I think uh, there's a lot of young women who amazingly are kind of taking up the charge. 
it's funny you, you mentioned the Emma Watson thing again. Going back to um, my 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 thirteen year old son now, mm-hmm. he was examined on that speech. Wow, as part, that's as part fascinating. Of the, as part of the English, curriculum. that's so cool. Yeah, so so. You know, you, it's easy to criticize people, you know, um, getting on the celebrity soapbox, but yeah. it actually, you know, of, of all the speeches given in the UN in the last 12 months, that was the one that made it into the, into the exam paper. Yeah, that's which, amazing. Which, which is kind of neat. Um, you've obviously got plans for this website, villainess.com, to be more than just a blog because, oh, mm-hmm. God, save us from yet another <laughs> blog. No, it's not and, just another and, blog. And, and one of the indicators of that is uh, a regular segment of if anything four days old can be called regular um, news in five. Yes. So you're trying to become a news portal as well. Yes, I'm um, tentatively. Yeah, because I mean, obviously there are some amazing uh, news organisations r- around the world, and I think Villainess doesn't have the resources to be breaking the news. Uh, but, but but then but then. You, you need, as we discussed before we came on here, you don't need as many resources. No, you're right, as you citizen did. journalists, absolutely. Um, and I think as Villainess grows, it may well have, you know, that kind of um, ability, especially if there are a number of uh, journalists around the world. I mean, already we have students writing from Monash and University of Massachusetts, and you know, a number of uh, overseas um, people who are getting involved in the project, which is amazing. So, yeah, I mean, eventually I would love for Villainess to to be even the students who are kind of tuned into what's happening around them in their area and then sending things back in and reporting kind of on the scene. Um, but for now, you know, I, I really think that news is very important. So with News in Five, it's basically the kind of five um, stories that are getting the most kind of attention uh, worldwide. Or, you know, if there's a story that's really pertinent to young women, then obviously that will be one of those uh, stories. Okay. Interestingly, I was I was talking to a guy called Gavin Healy the other week. Mm-hmm. He, he spoke at an event I helped run called TEDx Auckland. And he's the publisher of Element Magazine, which is, a, you would have seen it, it's like an insert in the Herald. Yes. Have you seen that? Yeah. And... He's he's a, a deeply deeply passionate uh, environmentalist. He he believes to the tips of his. He, he's a druid for goodness sake. This is this is this is how <laughs> wow. serious. And I love you. I love you for it, Gavin. If you're listening, but he made a decision. He he used to publish a magazine called Good, I think, which was a magazine just for people like that. Yeah, people who are just into the environment. And after a while, I think he realised he was you know preaching to the converted. So he made a conscious yeah, decision. Quiet. He made a conscious decision to go into the Herald, which is mainstream as anything, yes. and, and get his message in there. Tell me about your decision to, to make Villainess its own standalone thing rather than try and, you know, break down the gates or infiltrate into, you know, stuff or yeah, the Herald I, or, th- you know, Three News or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually, it's an interesting question because, I mean, I kind of, I've been, I'm, I've been very lucky to have some mentors uh, and, you know, who I could go and speak to. And I've kind of thrown, we've thrown ideas around about that. Um, But to be honest, I really wanted Villainess to be a space that is for young women and it's it's really dedicated to that. Um, I also, you know, I think we can all acknowledge that the media has had massive sweeping changes in the last decade, let's say, um, and probably beyond even further back than that. And I really wanted Villainess to be something new, to be something standalone, to not really have any kind of, um, you know, expectations or uh, parameters that it had to fit in. And and I think the beauty of of creating a new platform is that it can define itself. And, and even more than that, uh, the writers who are, in the same age bracket as the audience can actually define what they want Villainess to be, what they want to see, what kind of media. So it, it's just kind of, it's much more like a blank canvas and, and that's really exciting to me. Well, one of the things that defines an online community, of course, is, is the interaction with the readers and, and the comment section. Yeah. And, and often that can be, you know, I was, I was looking at the NBR this afternoon for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> no, I was looking at the NBR because I wrote something in it. And I was, oh, I was well, there you go. That's a good reason. <laughs> no, no one had commented. I just went up yesterday. We're digressing. We're talking about me. Um, how is the comment session section working out in Villainess so far? So we haven't we haven't kicked off yet, ah, uh, okay. which is interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, no, actually, like it is open, but we haven't had anyone commenting yet. We've had we've got a. Um, a measure in there called love so you can love an article so people have been loving things uh i think it's going to take a little bit of time to get the community 
talking uh, amongst themselves. But you're right. I mean, the the community is absolutely essential. Um, so I think as Villainess starts to gain a bit of traction and, and get a few more eyes, then hopefully it will just build organically. Well, hopefully it will after tonight. And is there a business plan for this thing? Is this going to be a moneymaker for you or is this going to be something that you put time and money into? Well, there is a business plan. Um, the idea is for Villainess to be a business. Um, although uh, I'm really, really focused on ethical business. So, you know, everything that Villainess does um, – I really want it to be good for the demographic that it serves. Uh, and also, you know, my kind of dream, which is probably a little way down the track, would be for Villainess to have like a foundation arm uh, where it could, for example, um, fund underprivileged young women through university or things like that. So, you know, I think um, hopefully Villainess will grow to be a successful business and then hopefully it can start to make a difference to some of its readers' lives. Very cool. Lizzie Marvelly from Villainess.com. Thanks for joining me tonight Thanks, on Sunday Ron. Social. Hey, after the break, all the apps, gadgets, doohickeys, websites, and all that other jazz you've just got to get into this week with the so clever Mr. Louis Van Wick. Back soon. Winter is coming, and so are the Audi Quattro Winter Games NZ. Radio Live has your chance to be there. Getting in the draw to win this incredible prize is easy. Online, via our website, or by texting keyword WINTER to 3920. The prize includes return flights to Queenstown for two, fabulous accommodation for two nights with a corehotels.com, and wheels thanks to Juicy. Win an Audi Quattro Winter Games NZ experience, proudly supported by Radio Live. It's Sunday Social. Everything you need to know about social media with Vaughn Davis. 
And welcome back to Sunday Social. I have not heard that song since perhaps the 1980s when it came out. But any excuse, it's a good song. It's a good song. Louis, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vaughn. It's great to be here again. Louis Van Wyck, PR Supremo, South African a long time ago. And I wrote something I wrote something funny about you, so I'm just trying to find it. There it is. South African expat, but social media native. That oh, was worth looking through my notes for. Would you like that? that? that that's brilliant, yeah. That, that is kind that, of that's brilliant. That's quite, yeah. You can put that That describes up. me, yeah. That, that'll, that'll be my new Twitter bio. Your new Twitter bio. What is your Twitter bio at the moment? How do you describe yourself? I can't remember, can you? Can't remember. It was all those years ago. Hey, the reason I played that awesome piece of music, Airway Spies, is because the very first thing you want to talk about, Louis, is what I want for Christmas. Yes, uh, it's the Lily drone camera. So what's different about the Lily drone camera is that unlike other camera drones or drones with of cameras, which there are plenty, there are plenty. This is the first one, which a is basically an uh, it's got an integrated camera, whereas the others have camera attachments. But the really cool thing about the Lily is it flies itself. So you don't have to fill around with any controls. You throw it up in the air and, and literally people are, I saw the video on, on, on the demo. They just throw up in the air and it just takes flight by itself. I think that is insanely cool that is very because cool. the the cool thing about drones is they fly around and they they photograph things and you know they they you know um, get points of view that you wouldn't otherwise get. But the really dumb thing about them is you've got to stand there with this little console. And you know, people already do this with GoPros, for instance. What you see, don't you? Um, what, what, if, what if you don't have adventures? What if all you do is mow the lawn? Because that would you need to you need to believe to to buy one these things and we'll get on to how you do that in a minute to buy one of these lily drones you need to actually believe that you have a bloody interesting life don't you that's probably why that's not on, it's not on my shopping list for that reason oh Louis, um, come on you got to have something you got to something, I, I, something I was to trying to think to. where could i use this and uh, just nothing came to mind um maybe mowing the lawn uh but you could always you know you, you could always fix something up in editing and and, and try and make it and, and, make, and put put in, put in some, uh, explosions some explosions and, yeah. and bits and pieces as you, as you mow the lawn zombies well i ordered one and here's here's the other way in which it's different to other drones it doesn't currently exist that's the only that's the only fly in the ointment it doesn't currently exist you can you can buy one but it's a bit like the apple watch isn't it i went into the apple store in sydney uh, a couple of weeks ago and i said oh can you actually buy these oh yeah, absolutely you can buy them I said, oh, okay. Um, how? Oh, you order them online. Oh, okay. And they arrive in July. So you can't actually buy one. Well, you can buy them, but you can't yeah, get Yeah, you them. can pay, but you can't get. Hmm. So Lily's a bit like that. So if you go to the website, lily.camera, yeah. who knew that camera was a top level web extension? Anyway, go to lily.camera and you can plonk down $499 US and they'll send you one in February 2016. And I, I was just so excited that I, I plonked all my money down and I, I just used the Radio Live credit card and didn't didn't realize that firstly, it doesn't come till February 2016. Secondly, it's via this sort of crowdfunding uh, platform I had not heard of called Tilt, which was interesting. And if the whole, whole endeavor just collapses and they go out of business, you don't get your money back. I've yeah. paid for, oh, well, Radio Live has paid its $499. <laughs> it's gone and you got nothing for Christmas. It's gone totally. And the other thing that broke my heart is I, I just assumed, right, I assumed this thing flies fast enough to keep up with my real airplane. So I could just throw it out the door, take off my airplane, and it would just faithfully follow along, you know, chronicling my adventures. But sadly, it only goes 40 kilometers per hour. Anyway, the name of the thing is a lily. If, uh, if, you are, if you are the kid with everything and you have an exceptionally interesting life and you'd like a drone to follow you around, just hovering off your shoulder to, uh, to prove it to the world, lily is the way to do it. Now, this is, this is another bit of news you, uh, you dug up um, 
Louis, and and I, I have seen this around the place. It's a bit weird. Google Maps. Google Maps has gone a bit wonky. Yes, there's a there was a, a thing that came that people discovered during uh, the, the last couple of weeks where if you put uh, uh, the N word, the really bad N word, into the Google Maps search box, which is where you normally write, you know, uh, Ponsonby Road address, yes. or Sky Tower or That's something. Right. Yeah. So, so you put that in instead. So someone's gone in and so so the actual phrases were N word house or N word king, and it would come up with an interesting location being the White House. In so Washington. So that's a bit that's a bit squirrely. It's, it's a as, it's a little as, bit as you as you might say strange, and and what's actually interesting about this is that. This isn't a hack. This isn't someone has gone in and, and, and made this happen. This is basically because people have used those terms in online discussions, online discussions about that particular place. And they've linked the two things together. And it's linked and, the two and, things and Google together. has been sneaky, sneaky, sneaky and just, just thought it was being helpful mm -hmm. and associated the two things. Yeah. So that's kind of one of the um, drawbacks if you're using user-generated content to answer questions online. The algorithms, the computers don't really. They don't just know if discriminate it's between the two things. Being offensive or not, or not. So I did this to myself. Mm -hmm. I, I, I strangely enough put put my name in uh, in Google Maps, and, and I thought I might come up with my house. Maybe I don't know. I came up with Grab One, which is really weird because <laughs> I've I don't think I've ever bought a Grab One voucher. Um, I've now said Grab One three more times on air than I've ever said it in my life, and. I've never been to their office, so that was a bit weird. What did you get when you uh, when you put your name in? I got an interesting result being the Kingsland pub. Oh, that makes perfect in sense. Kingsland. Do you hang out there? No, not often, but I can actually explain this. I once went to an op shop gig there, and I wrote a review about it. So that went there onto you my go. blog, and obviously that linked the two. There you go. So Google Maps, not just for finding where places are, but finding out who you really are. Ah, you could say. Hey, social media, there's an award for everything else. There's an award. There's probably plumbing, plumbing awards. I went to the Meat Awards the other night. There's certainly some of those. The Meat Awards were good. Um, social media awards coming up. That's correct, yes. So the awards are coming up on the on the 15th of July. And um, the good thing about, well, we're very excited about these awards. They're the second annual Smackles, Social Media Club Auckland Social Media Awards. Something, 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 something like yep. that. The smackles. The smackles. And um, we're actually giving people the opportunity to go in and nominate finalists for the awards in, in, a, in, in seven categories, such as the best social media product launch or uh, best emerging blog. And perhaps Lizzie's Villainess blog could be nominated oh, by she, someone. She says it's not a blog. Oh, okay. Oh, we'll let her in anyway. No. Um, and there's also a People's Choice Award. So people can go in and, and nominate, um, do nominations until the 18th of June at smacklesmcakl.com. And I'll, we'd love to get as many nominations as possible. Fantastic. smcakl.com and uh, best use of a social media platform. I'd say that would be at Vaughan Davis on Twitter. <laughs> hey, you're listening to Sunday Social with me for the rest of the show. My goodness, it's almost over. Louis Van Wyck. Back soon. Be entertained. Be fully informed. Drive home with Duncan Garner. The protesters who targeted um, the Prime Minister at Sky City today. Um, this was the post-budget uh, lunch, if you like, where the protesters got so angry. I wonder if any of them had actually read the budget, which gave them almost $1 billion. <laughs> Yeah, so scum for giving $25 a week as of next April. Imagine if you've got 50 bucks, would you just be sort of semi-scum? Drive home with Duncan Garner. Weekdays, 3 till 6 on Radio Live.
It's Sunday Social. <laughs> Don't worry, be happy. There are 1.49 bazillion them. Most of them are rubbish. I have spent the entire clients were working through the internet and finding the good stuff. Before I, get it, I would say that that interview from the first half with Lizzie Marvelly is up right now. Or oh, actually, don't listen to it. Listen to it. And and Sunday social back because that villainess don't sound hey look man yes, you, you're in business you go to business meetings with business people and a lot of times in business meetings you have to sign contracts that's right and problem is if you're not in the place and someone's email how they you know it's easy enough to print it out and sign it but what do you do then well an app for that right i do and it's called scannable by the sample who brought you Evernote. This is the camera and your to caption print document and then turns it into a PDF handle email uh, account or drop folder and just mean to go scanner. Well, who's anymore? Well, I can't remember who's it. So I, I had a bit of a play with it. It's actually it's pretty cool, and and, it, and it's free, and it steps you through the the, the process of using um, onboarded, if that's a word, <laughs> to an app quite so um, convincingly as I have to this app called Scannable. Um, 